Hello. Happy Sunday. It is December 15th, 2019, and I thought I would just pop in to do kind of a, a reflecting on this last year, 2019. But before I get into that, um, it is freezing in Wisconsin, but I'm smiling today because the sunshine is out. It feels like it's been weeks since I've seen the sun. And uh, I'm telling you, seasonal affective disorder, SAD, SAD, is real. It is so real. I'm coming out of a few weeks of really feeling low. And I, uh, I guess I just, I felt, I feel like it's important to share that because I don't want to misrepresent myself in any of my videos that since I left a high control religion slash corporation slash cult, also known as uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses, Watchtower, that's what the majority of my videos are about. Um, and by the way, TOE stands for Theory of Everything. If you're wondering, if you've never like seen my videos, my name is Allie and I left the Watchtower Corporation. Um, and part of my testimony is that while I was a Jehovah's Witness, I really, really struggled with severe depression and suicidal ideations, and I just never felt I was good enough, and it was work, 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 knock on doors, and just do more, do more, and I just never felt good enough. But I was sincere sincere at heart as a Jehovah's Witness, and I, and I believed in the God Watchtower puts forth, and... Thanks to God, um, through his grace, I was delivered out of that um, by my Lord Jesus Christ. That is my testimony. Um, but I just wanted to pop in and talk about this last year of a lot of activity and uh, where I've been at since the last video I put out there a few weeks ago. And it has not been... A walk in the park or a day at the beach, partly because of uh, seasonal affective disorder and the lack of self care. Uh, but real quick, I just wanted to introduce you to uh, my grandparents resting in peace wherever they are. That's a whole other story and topic that I spent a lot of time thinking about. Um, Ultimately, I'll leave that for another time, perhaps. Or you can have a conversation with me privately about that. But that's, um, I used to visit this spot a lot as a kid because it's across the street from the house where I grew up. And I would come down here and water flowers for my grandmother, my grandmother, Lily. She passed away when I was 10 and she was such a sweet lady. So sweet. I have so many wonderful memories of her. Today is all about memories real quick. Um... I went to a Kingdom Hall this morning, but it's no longer a Kingdom Hall. In 2001, the Kingdom Hall that I grew up in, I was born in 1979, so all I, I walked in this building and it was just like, I'm flooded with all of these memories of this Kingdom Hall. Um, and in tw 2001, the congregations here sold that building to the Baptists. And over like the last two years, I gave myself permission to go as I, as I call it church hopping as part of my rehabilitation, part of my healing process to realize that all these people and people who identify themselves as Christians that I was told were false Christians and part of Babylon, the great, the, the harlot riding on the wild beast uh, like that was how I was taught to view the, the church, the body of Christ. Um, so part of my rehabilitation process was church hopping and I didn't make it over to that building. It should have been first on my list because it was the kingdom hall, but I, uh, went to the Baptist church this morning. It's called Hope Strict Baptist and I went wearing pants and like a sweater uh because I don't like wearing skirts 
And I quickly realized I was very underdressed because all of the women were wearing skirts well below their knee and hats. But they were very welcoming to me. I had some pleasant conversations with the pastor and several other uh, members afterwards. And just being in that building it was crazy. Maybe I'll talk about that in a future video, like specific memories. It'll be like my bloopers video, like memories in the Kingdom Hall. But I want to start with a scripture out of Ecclesiastes. Uh, Ecclesiastes 1, verse 2. Meaningless, meaningless, says the teacher. Utterly meaningless. Everything is meaningless. That kind of encapsulates how I've been feeling for about the last four weeks in this fog of meaningless because I've been just collecting all of these beliefs and perspectives and observing how others do church how others believe, how atheists believe. I've just immersed myself in data collection. And I found myself feeling less and less sure of myself. And I just felt like I was in the middle of the ocean trying to like gasp for air. And where's the shore? Like, where's my shore? I, I kind of was losing myself a little bit in the process while trying to listen to everybody else. One of the rabbit holes I spent quite a bit of time exploring in the last few weeks was that of, um, well, here, let me rewind for a moment. So part of the whole JW realm and, uh, paradigm is you got to work for your salvation. When I was released of that false teaching, that false gospel, I kind of swung like a pendulum to this far left view of hyper grace. That being, um, you don't have to work at all. Hyper grace Jesus accepts you however you are, and you don't have to do anything. Just simply say, oh, Jesus is Lord, and you're good to go. And I found myself listening to sermons by uh, these prosperity preachers like Joel Osteen and Joyce Meyer, which, let me rewind again, someone had sent me a, a sermon I don't know, a year ago, and I was surprised that this person was sending me a Joel Osteen sermon, and I was like, you listen to him? Like, isn't he a false teacher? Like, a this prosperity gospel thing that I didn't even, you know, okay, so there's this expression, I speak a little Spanish, and people say, oh, hablas espanol, and I'll say, si un poquito, just enough to get myself into trouble, and I feel like that's how it is once you go out into this wide, wide world of uh, pastors and preachers and teachers and prophets and me messengers and and these people who have professed Jesus as Lord and that they've received the spirit and then they get on their box and they preach and it's, they're very charismatic and it sounds good and it makes you feel good. But if you, if you know the word of God, un poquito, you know, just enough to get yourself into trouble, which is why being in God's word daily you can't shortcut that. And I definitely fall into times and seasons where I want to get into the word, but it's like, oh, I want to listen to this first, or I want to do this first, or I want to like, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, I watched a documentary, uh, a couple weeks ago called the American gospel. And the first 50 minutes of it, first 50 minutes of it is free on YouTube, but you can buy the whole thing on Amazon Prime or, you know, some other venue. I, I, I do recommend it because for me, leaving a super, super law-based, works-based, high-control group 
this prosperity gospel of hyper grace really made me feel good. Um, where am I going with all of this? Kind of like what I went back to reading Ecclesiastes, meaningless, meaningless. I found myself just drowning in words and that kind of led to this gradual progression of confusion and feeling overwhelmed and the feelings of overwhelm led to feeling kind of depressed that combined with a lot of cloudy days, cold temperatures and poor self-care habits. Uh, I relapsed and then I felt, and by relapse, I mean, I fell into a bit of a depression again and, and then I would wake up feeling ashamed and guilty because I thought that part of my testimony to Jesus was my declaration that I had been cured of my depression. And I didn't want to talk about it. I didn't want to talk about the fact that I was feeling depressed again. Now, mind you, I did not have any um, ideations of suicide or longing to die. But this takes me to a scripture in 1 Kings 19 about Elijah. So I, I went on YouTube and I just typed in when Christians get depressed and a, and a bunch of videos came up and one in particular really soothed my spirit and my soul and meditating on this account brought me a lot of comfort and it really took away the shame and guilt I was feeling for feeling depressed. And, and this relates to, to my year of 2019. I promise I'm going to come full circle eventually. I have to ramble a lot to get there, but bear with me. So the context of 1 Kings 18 and 19 is Elijah is um, doing all of this prophesying. And essentially, he's like in battle against false prophets, against... Um, He's just fighting a lot and and the Lord fortifies him and helps him and he comes out on the other side with his faith strengthened and he goes on this 300 mile is it mile or meter I don't know I don't know if <laughs> did uh did the Hebrews use the metric system you know what I'm saying he took a really 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 long journey and he didn't um eat or drink during this time and he got depressed uh in 1 Kings 19, verse 3, so uh, Ahab tells Jezebel that everything Elijah's doing and how Elijah killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah to say, may the gods deal with me, be it ever so severely, but if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that, like that of one of them. Verse 3, Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Drank, Strengthened by that food, he traveled forty days and forty nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And then, it, you know, it, it continues on... But essentially, Elijah, you know, by today's standards, he might have been diagnosed with bipolar because he's like, action, action, action. And then like, God, take my life. I want to, I'm no better than those who are, than my ancestors who are dead. And that's kind of how I was feeling. And then I, I paused and I looked at like the season I'm in now. So review of 2019 for me, uh, started out the year 
in January. I was not attending meetings. I think I, I think the last meeting I ever went to, I wish I had recorded this, but the last meeting I went to, I think was a circuit overseer visit in November of 2018 because a friend from work wanted to check out the kingdom hall. So we went and, uh, we were like kind of love bombed, like half of the people love bombed me. And then the other half just looked at me like, why is she here? Cause it had been, I had been marked an apostate in May of 2018. So went to the meeting and I was like, yeah, I don't, I don't need to come back here anymore. Um, like Jesus might say, maybe Jesus would say, let them be. I don't know. I don't know what Jesus would exactly say about the Jehovah's Witnesses now, because it's like sometimes he was quiet with the Pharisees or just kind of skirted around them and let them be their Pharisaical selves. But other times he was like, not tactful and called them offspring offspring of vipers and whitewashed graves. Uh, obviously, I'm not Jesus. I'm, I don't know what to say all the time. But hopefully you get what I'm saying. So anyway, I was officially a faded apostate, marked an apostate, but not disfellowshipped or announced from the platform. And I... Uh, I was trying to, because I wanted to still keep that very thin line of communication open with uh, the last few friends and family who still sort of communicate with me. Well, then it's, uh, what, June of this year when the May 2019 Watchtower article discussing child sex abuse was being discussed at the Watchtower study. I saw other XJW activists protesting or going to the Kingdom Hall, raising their hand about this article or uh, peacefully wearing posters about this, this uh, very double speak dishonest article. So I went to the Kingdom Hall and I recorded a conversation with a couple elders that I had after the study because they wouldn't call on me. Uh, and I put that recording up on my YouTube channel, and I, I still don't know who <laughs> who is watching it from this area, but clearly someone told the elders about this recording I had made. So then I got invited to a judicial meeting. I got a text message from one of these elders inviting me to a judicial meeting to discuss my unwillingness to recognize the faithful and discreet slave. That meeting was July 31st of this year, 2019. So my husband and I went to this meeting. It was me on one side of the table versus four elders. And uh, I went into the meeting and they just, I sat down and they said, we are here to inform you that you have disassociated yourself. I said, what? <laughs> I haven't disassociated myself. Could we say a prayer? They said, no, we're not here to say a prayer. We're just here to let you know you disassociated myself. So I, I did record that conversation as well. Uh, two days later, they announced me. I asked if I could appeal. Um, they said, no, you can't appeal because you've disassociated yourself by getting baptized in Lake Michigan by someone who's not a Jehovah's Witness. Uh, I called Bethel and spoke to an unnamed Bethelite a couple days later and I left that recording on this YouTube channel and then the announcement was made and I remembered feeling so that was August 1st of 2019 and I felt like a weight had been lifted off my shoulder like I was relieved that my name was no longer associated with the organization known as Jehovah's Witnesses the Watchtower Jehovah's Witnesses whatever and I was happy and I was walking every day and enjoying fellowship with uh, new Christians, making new friendships. It was a lot of like new growth. And then, so, so it kind of felt like Elijah, like I had done, I had fought these battles. And I wonder if people who are uh, deployed, like for the military, they go do these like multiple deployments and they have an assignment and they have a job and they go to this place and they're 
you know, with these other people who they're, they're doing this job and they're engaged in training and combat and they're busy. And then that assignment is over and they come home and they're with their family and their kids or whatever. And they don't know how to like be normal, like reacclimate to like the normal life of go to work, cook your meals, go to the gym. So I found myself like after all of those rather intense exchanges after the dust had settled from all of that this year, I've been feeling like, okay, both to myself and also to God, like now what now, now, how do now, how do you want to use me? Like, I'm kind of like at this new phase in my life of now what, because I certainly don't want the rest of my life to be about fighting watchtower. I I remember hearing expressions in the past, like being very conscious when using language. There's a difference between being anti-war and pro-peace. Because even when you use the expression like anti-war or against war, you still have the word war in that phrase, which is, let's just label that like negative. And let's label the word peace positive. Like I, I do want to be more about building something now for myself, my community, my life, my ministry, cultivating fruits instead of pruning and lopping off old growth. That is necessary. That definitely was a necessary part of me extracting myself from that organization. Like lopping off the dead branches that didn't serve me and and I believe do not serve God. Things like shunning, things like twisting scripture and and using scriptures where they have the expression two witnesses like in Matthew 18 and in Deuteronomy. They completely take these scriptures, twist them and distort them so that they can cover up child sex abuse. Like that is something that needs to be pruned out of that organization, but they stubbornly refuse. And for the sake of the children, I pray that they give that up and just call the police. And I pray that this organization gives up the shunning policy because it hurts families. They're hurting themselves. But my war with Watchtower is over. I, uh, I'm learning how to now make life about moving forward and now what? So I think because I'm I'm in this valley, I came off that one mountain and now I'm in this valley. It's it is like now what? So I just wanted to leave this message for anybody else out there wherever you are in your journeys. I do think sometimes relapse is part of recovery. Every day isn't like, I'm happy, happy, happy. I'm not. Some days I'm not. But I'm just so thankful this year for the the new friends I've made. And I'm excited about 2020. And I have no clue what it's going to be about. 2019 was a lot of uprooting and upheaval and renovating. And uh, so... I hope anybody who made it this far in this video is <laughs> hello and shalom and be well. And and I keep forgetting to put my email in the description. I'll put it down there. I only check my email like twice a month. So if I don't get back to you, I'm sorry. I'm not going to put my phone number in the description here. But I just want... I, uh, if you're struggling, just know that I am here to listen to you. Because the people who listened to me during my struggle times were lifesavers to me. And I thank you, friends, for that. And I believe it's about paying it forward. So uh, I'll stop rambling. Bye now.